video was about solving fractional equations. So now we'll use all of our skills with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing these things to actually solve equations that have fractionals in them. So the easiest type is if it's just one fraction on the left side of the equation and one fraction on the right side of the equation, because then we can just cross multiply. We've been cross multiplying probably since middle school. So this is something you should know how to do. When you cross multiply, it'll be 3 times 4x plus 5, and I put it in parentheses to remind us that we have to distribute that, equals, right, we bring down the equal sign. On the other side, it'll be 9 times x plus 1. We distribute over here 12x plus 15, 9x plus 9, and then just solve this equation like normal, x will equal negative 2. Okay, that's the easiest type. But it's more complicated than that. It's not just a fraction equaling a fraction. Now we have some other operations involved. I'm writing it a little bigger so I can actually do some operations for this. I want to get rid of all these fractions the same way we did early in the year by multiplying everything by the denominator. That will get rid of the fraction. However, we have two different denominators here. We have an x and we have a 4. So what we want to do is multiply the entire equation by both denominators at the same time. And remember to multiply by the top of each fraction. So when you do this 4x times 5, because it's over x, the x's will just cancel, and 4 times 5 is 20. When you do 4x times 7, because there's a 4 on the bottom, the 4's will cancel, and all we'll be left with is 7x. And then we do 4x times negative 9, because there's already an x on the bottom, the x's will cancel, and this will equal negative 36. Now we have no denominators, and we solve this equation like normal. All right, let's see if it gets harder. Now we have a whole number one minus a fraction with a, a pretty complex denominator, x minus 5, and then this one is over x. So now we've got two different denominators, x minus 5 and x. We're still going to multiply the entire equation by both denominators at the same time. And don't forget to multiply them by the whole number as well. So this is the only place where we'll actually have to multiply by both the x and the x minus 5. Nothing's going to cancel out here. So our first term will be x squared minus 5x. I've multiplied x times x minus 5. But when we multiply it by the second fraction, because there's already an x minus 5 in the denominator, those will cancel out. And we'll be left with minus 8x. And then we'll distribute it all the way over here to the top of this fraction. Because there's already an x in the denominator, the x will cancel out. And all we'll be left with is a 3x minus a 15. This is quadratic, so we want to get everything on the left, make it say equal 0. So here we have x squared. I'm going to combine this minus 5 and minus 8 to be minus 13x. And then subtract the 3x from the other side, so minus 16x. Add the 15 to this side, and it'll say equals 0. This is factorable. Multiplying to make 15, we'll have to use negative 15 and negative 1 so that they add up to negative 16, which means this has two solutions, x equals 15 and x equals 1. If it says in the direction that you have to check for extraneous solutions, then when you get your two answers, you actually have to go back, plug them both into the original problem, and make sure that they work. So this is going to be the longest problem of all. I'm going to copy this right now so that when I'm down at the bottom later, I can paste it and we can use the original problem to check our answers. All right, so let's start by writing a little bigger. And while I do this, I'm going to factor this denominator x squared minus 9 into x plus 3, x minus 3. And now I can see that I have x minus 3, x plus 3 as my common denominator. So that's what I'm going to put out in front to distribute through this whole equation. x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay. And all there. When I distribute this by the first fraction, it already has an x minus 3 in the denominator, so that will cancel. The numerator then will be 6x plus 18 equals, bring it to the second fraction. The second fraction has both in the denominator, so both will cancel. I don't have to do any multiplying here. I'm just left with 8x squared. 
And then by the last fraction, it has an x plus 3 in the denominator. So the x plus 3s will cancel. And all I have to do is minus 4x times x minus 3. I'm going to put that over here so you can see when I distribute, this will become 4x squared. And this will become minus 12x. But because it was subtraction, I'm going to write it as plus 12x. All right, now we have a quadratic equation again. I want to get everything on one side so it says equals zero. So I'll get everything over onto the right side of the equation because I like to have my x squared be positive. So right now this will say 6x plus 18 equals 4x squared. I'm going to combine those like terms plus 12x, right? I just combine those. Now I'm going to subtract 6x from here. And what the heck, let's subtract 18 at the same time so that our equation will be nothing over here. And 4x squared plus 6x minus 18. Go ahead and factor this by taking out a 2 at first. So we'll be left with 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. I can divide both sides by 2 right here so that this will go away. Now it says 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Now, to factor this, this is why I changed colors. I was going to start doing this. So multiply 2 times negative 9, negative 18. So the stuff you see in red here, this is split in the middle term. So what makes negative 18? That adds to positive 3. We're going to use positive 6x and negative 3x. Because that would make 18, negative 18 if you multiply. It'll make positive 3x by addition. Bring down our first term and our last term. I factor by grouping, take out a 2x, be left with x plus 3. Take out a negative 3, be left with x plus 3. That means one of our factors is 2x minus 3, and the other one is x plus 3. This whole thing equals 0. Solve each piece, x will equal 3 over 2, and negative 3. And then like I said, way up at the top, we're going to have to check both of these answers. So let's see if I can paste in my original problem, which it doesn't want to let me do, so I'm going to paste it like well. So, okay. And scroll down. Okay, here's my original problem. I need to plug both of these answers in to see if they work. This can be tedious and time consuming, so I suggest you use your calculator if you've got one. What you want to see is if the, fact, the fraction on the left will equal whatever this difference is on the right, okay, when you plug in both values. So let's start by plugging in negative 3 into this fraction. So this is 6 over negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6, equals 8 times negative 3 squared, which is 9, over negative 3 squared minus 9. Well, since negative 3 squared is 9, so we're going to subtract 9 from that. This is going to be over 0, which right off the bat tells me this answer is not going to work. I'm getting something undefined here. We know undefined means I can't have it. It's not going to be one of my solutions. So I'm going to cross this one out right away. It gets me an undefined fraction. Now I'll try plugging in 3 halves. Okay? So 6 over 3 halves minus 3 equals 8 parentheses 3 halves second over 3 halves squared minus 9 minus 4 times 3 halves over 3 halves plus 3. All right. Like I said, I suggest you use your calculator because there's a lot of places you can go wrong when trying to work with this many fractions. What you're going to get on this left side of the equation is 6 over to do 3 halves minus 3. If you're trying to do it by hand, you have to put this also over 2. 3 halves minus 6 halves is going to give us negative 3 halves. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 6 over negative 3 halves. Which is the same as saying, let's multiply both the top and the bottom by 2 here. 12 over negative 3, which is the same as saying negative 4. So I'm going to erase all of this. And this side of the equation comes out to negative 4. If you plug all of this into your calculator on the right, you'll see that this also is going to come out to negative 4. And when you get the same thing on both sides of the equation, then you know your answer worked. 
Next.